Uh, Sapu Bob, who obviously put the game, because that's what he does, he, did, he didn't say nothing. So I, I got nothing. Luckily, I knew that who submitted the game. Okay, so they played an Alep in Sicilian. For more information, see my Chessable course, which isn't out yet. But it'll come out in a month, then, then, then purchase it. Okay, knight f6, which I do not discuss. Okay, this is all theory. This is all the main line. d6 is okay. Cd, de, de, e6 blocking the bishop. Somewhat passive, but all right, solid. Knight c3. Seems like Black could just take that and go into an equal end game. Bishop b4, also good. Bishop d2. These moves are all good. White is very slightly better. Now white has the two bishops and more space. Black has the slightly better pawn structure. It says castles is dubious, but I mean, castles is fine. Bishop e2, that's, yeah, you can't, you can't play bishop e2. I mean, every bishop move is better. I mean, but our hero is black, so it's okay if white makes mistakes. But bishop d3 is the obvious square for the bishop. Then we play the unsound Greek sacrifice next. Okay, b6, castles, bishop b7, still pretty equal. Nobody's blundering yet. C4, that's explosive. Knight e7. Bishop b4, excellent move. Knight d7. I mean, c2 isn't where you want your queen because black has a half open c file. But it's not that bad. Knight c5 makes sense. Rook fd1. Seems okay. Queen c7. And this position's better for black for two reasons. White's pawn structure. White has three potential weak pawns and two pawns on the queen side are isolated. The other reason is uh, when white has a pawn on e5, white wants to attack black's king. Um, otherwise, black is just going to have a better end game because all these pawns are weak. So sometimes black having the better pawn structure is okay for white because white has an initiative against black's king. White has the two bishops, white's pawns on e5, white can play knight g5 threatening mate. So because of this mini initiative, it's okay. But I don't see an initiative for white. I don't see how white's going to attack. Um, black has a nice knight on c5, a nice bishop. This knight can go to f5 or g6. And these pawns are just going to be weak. So black is much better here. Okay, a4. It's legal. Rook a c8, that's good. a5. White's getting rid of his isolated pawn. Bishop takes f3. Black decides to win a pawn. Bishop takes f3, queen takes e5. So black is up a pawn, but white has two bishops against two knights in an open position. So the engine says black is slightly better. Okay, and they traded. Rook a7, very aggressive. The engine's not a fan of that move because it forces black to activate his knight, which he didn't do. Played knight c6 because that gets one of the bishops. But the engine actually likes the knights and plays knife f5. Always play knife f5. And then it likes black here quite a, quite a bit. Okay. Knight c6 seems very logical. Ooh, bishop takes c5. Ooh. Ooh, I just ate. Ooh. No, no. The bishop c3 is the, is the chess move. Bishop takes c5. Not good. Okay. I mean, now black's a pawn up for nothing. I mean, if anything, black's better. 
Okay, bishop c6, I agree with. We can't let black play knight d4. Knight's too good on d4. All right, and white has drawing chances because it's hard for black to use his extra pawn. It's four to three on the king side. Okay, rook a d7, it's legal. H6, that doesn't really get luffed because this queen is defending that. So maybe g6 would have been preferable. Queen a4. It's not a good square for the queen, but okay. Rook b6, queen a7. See, this is very risky what white's doing because white has nothing protecting his king. And in particular, the f2 square and also the c4 pawn. So black can attack the f2 pawn and the c4 pawn and white is pretending to be active, but I mean, black's rook is on f8, so. Okay, rook b2, g3, queen f5 is a good move, threatening to win in one move. Whoa, f4, god damn. f4? Okay, so. I've changed my life's ambition due to the move F4. My life's ambition is to report this person with white to all chess sites and get their rating lowered by a lot. F4, God damn. Yay, sub goal starting. Let's get to one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to spend the rest of the stream telling you why F4 is bad. We're not going to look at any more games or the rest of this game. Okay, this game is only half over. What? <laughs> I don't know what's worse, F4 or Black's next move. It's F4, but it's close. Right, white can't survive five more moves, but white survived 30 more moves. Well, black's next move is the last move you'd want to play. Like, I would play queen d5 first because that threatens queen g2 mate. I just overlooked that the queen was hanging to three different pieces. That's reasonable. More reasonable than what black did. Okay, f4 is terrible because you opened the seventh rank. And the king is exposed forever. And the game just ends after queen e4. The engine's already announced mate. Queen e4 threatens queen g2 check. And the best white can do is lose a rook with check. White can play rook d2. And then I check. And then I take the rook with check. That's the best white can do. If white's on his game, he can find that. But that's not why F4 is bad. F4 is bad. Uh, one reason is queen E4, the game's over. But if black couldn't play queen E4, F4 is just as bad. F4 is a bad move you can't retract. If it was possible for white to play F4 to F2 later, then F4 wouldn't be as bad. You can't recover from F4. This might be 1947 and play F4. It's not even Lee Chess. Okay, now I could complain a lot more about F4 and I could send this position to some of my chess friends who are higher rated than you and say white played F4 here and they would be like, no, he didn't. You're, you're making that up. Okay, but I know better than them. I know... That'd be like the worst thing they've ever seen in their life was the move F4. Okay. However, Black was not to be outdone. Black said, what's my best piece? Aha, my rook on the seventh rank. Maybe I should trade that off. I like the way this move gets dubious. This next, Black's next move should get three question marks. And it gets dubious. I've never been so angry. Okay, what Black played rook b1. 
God damn. Rig B1, making F4 not look as bad. But F4 is so bad that it's dead lost for white. Like, even if black intentionally plays Rook B1 and doesn't punish white, white will get punished anyway, because white, white played F4. So it'll have to get published at some point, or punished and published. Man, this is only the first game, and these are like two of the highest rated players who submitted a game, and it's still the worst move I've ever seen. I can't wait for the next games. Queen C2 also is like plus five, plus six for black. Queen E4 is better than Queen C2, but Queen C2 is pretty winning. The two rook versus queen ending is completely winning because white played F4. So white's going to get mated on the back rank. Like in this position, if I go here, obviously you have to play rook D2, one of your rooks. And white can't survive this position because white played F4. So black is going to move his rook here and then he's going to play, you know, rook C2, rook D1 mate. I mean, your king's on g1 and you played f4. White could survive quite a long time if he could play f2. Then he'd be doing fine. Okay. I mean, not fine, but, you know, better. And what, what I need the, the people in the chat to do and the people who are watching on YouTube after the fact, a couple days, I need you to get much better at chess. So if you're 1,200, get to like 1,900. If you're 1,400, get to 2,100. If you're 1,700, get to 2,400. And the reason I want you to get better at chess isn't for you, isn't so that you're proud of yourself and your friends are proud of you and you did something with your life. It's so you can understand better how bad F4 is. The better you are at chess, the, the more you'll realize F4 I mean, like, I feel like calling Aviv now and, and telling him about F4 so he can be as disgusted as me. Queen H1 is illegal, but if it was legal, white would play king takes queen. And if black did play queen H1, king takes queen, white is still losing even though he's up a queen because he played f4. And as long as anybody believes that, that joke landed. If one person believed it, then it was good. Just tuned in. Why is the pawn on f4? Very good. Thanks, Big Daddy, for one bit. Hi, Chess TV. I'm Ben, and I've been complaining about F4 for seven minutes. Okay, F4 shouldn't get a question mark. It should get an infinite number of question marks, and it should be a, a, a series of infinity that no other series is larger. Because, like, there's more numbers, for example between zero and one, then there are whole numbers. Or maybe it's the other way around, which, whichever one's funnier. However, there's the same number of whole numbers and odd numbers, which I find funny. But, but I want this infinite number of question marks to have no other infinite series to be larger. That's how many question marks I would give F4. In case you didn't know, I'm not a fan of the move F4. Yeah, integers. You know, I'm so angry about F4, I can't make a cogent simile. I recommend that book for every level of player. What would be better instead of F4? 
No, f4 is okay. Well, in this position, black is threatening queen f2. So the two moves that come to mind are rook f1, which is the best move, or rook to d2. Then black's up a pawn, and the game goes on. After f4, if black played queen e4, white, white could resign. Okay, white, black played rook b1, which is, it's not good. It's not as bad as f4, but it's pretty bad. It shows a lack of understanding of, of chess in general and other board games. Because you played rook f1, Sapu Bob, I don't think you would be good at like poker, backgammon, cribbage, um, bridge, uh, monopoly. I think you would be poor at those games because you played the move rook b1. I don't like the move rook b1. By the way, I'm being too nice. If, 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 a, if a super grandmaster was analyzing this game, after f4, he would quit chess forever and he'd move, in, he'd move into like the forest and just die in a cave. Yeah, too nice. Okay, rook b1 shows a lack of understanding of what you should be doing in chess. Okay, the thing you should do in chess, okay, write this down, is you should checkmate your opponent. That's actually how you win. You checkmate your opponent. When your opponent plays f4, he's helping you checkmate him. And then when you play rook b1, you're like, no, I don't want to checkmate you. I want to trade pieces. Okay, and rook b one's worse than that, but I don't want to be too mean. I don't want you to feel bad. So your move was legal, and it didn't lose material, so very good. It was good. Okay. Okay, white played, rook takes, queen takes, king g2. Like, this position wouldn't be so bad if white's pawn was on f2. It would be bad, but this is like f4 so bad white white's gonna lose like black can do whatever he wants and white's always gonna be losing because white played f4 to show you how bad f4 is imagine if black played f5 attempting to play as badly as white then white would checkmate black okay although you should play rook g7 first and repeat okay so black played queen c2 check and took the c4 pawn, blacks up two pawns. Probably there was no funny business at this point. c3 question mark. I mean, c3 is okay. It's, it's not the best move. Yeah, what we want to do is we want to checkmate the king. So we want to play queen check, and after king g2, play rook a8 and rook a2 and since white played f4, it's going to get checkmated. Okay, so black didn't want to checkmate white. Black wanted to make a queen. So let's see if he was successful. I'm guessing not. Queen d5. Okay. Now, I'd like to point something out. And I'm not judging it. I'm just pointing it out. f4 got one question mark. Okay, if you don't believe me, I, I'll, I'll go back because you probably forgot. I mean, if I knew how to go back, this would be better. Uh, there it is. Okay, f4 gets one question mark. And then queen d5 gets two question marks. Okay, queen d5 is a million times better than f4. So if queen d5 gets two question marks, then... F4 should get a Googleplex of question marks, not one. Okay, Queen D5 again shows a lack of understanding of chess. And your rating shouldn't be that high because you, you, you can't be like over a thousand and play Queen D5. 
when you trade queens in chess, you want to see whose king is safer. Okay, since white king is completely unsafe, you want the queens on the board. So any queen move wins for black, unless you hang your queen. You know, queen e5, queen e4, queen f4. A lot of moves hang the queen. Chess is a tough game. Okay, but so all those moves win. But you play queen d5, now you're not winning. Now it's a draw. Of course, you did win because, you know, it's, it's, truth hurts. Okay, so it takes, takes, takes. And this position is a draw because black doesn't really have a good winning plan. In fact, black won pretty quickly. 15 moves, wow. Okay, rook d8 is correct. You, you, you want to play rook d3 after the move d4. Okay, you don't want to play rook d3 before d4. That's Okay, so if black plays d4, we play rook d3, our king saunters over to e4, and we take the d-pawn. If black doesn't play d4, we want to play king d4. So we're not going to play rook d3. We'll put our rook like on c1. We'll put our king on d4, and the game is a draw. Okay, rook d3. Now black is better. Never play f6. f6 is a mistake because it weakens all the white squares, and it stops black from playing king e6 and king f6. So you want to play king up here. Then if white plays f5, we have f6, e5, and d6 for our king. Now after d6, f5, f6, f5, black can't go to f6 with his king anymore, so he's slower. So f6, now the game is a draw again. f5, king f7, king g3. These moves are all fine. Okay, and now rook e3 check would draw um, because... If black stays with his kingside pawns, then that's are not getting anywhere. You're not, not doing nothing. King e7, king f7. Can't win doing that. So black would, black would probably move his king to the d file, but then you can't defend your kingside pawns. So if you play king c5, I play here. You play d4, and my king can go in front of your pawn. I'm just in time. And I'm, I mean, I'm, white's just taking all the kingside pawns. I, I would rather have white here, but the engine says it's a draw. But pawns are all hanging. Okay, so this is still a draw with optimal play. But white played king f4. Now black's winning. Black plays king d6. And now white can never play rook to the seventh rank, which he just did in the variation I showed because black can play rook d7. After rook d7, white has no counterplay, so black just wins. Black just has fun and wins. And I assume that's what happened. h4, yeah, white, black just comes up and wins. Yeah. h4 and g5 do nothing. Yeah, we just, you know, we just, yeah. Well, that king c3. King c3 is a blunder, because I spent the last five minutes saying how white could never get his rook to the seventh rank. Then you play king c3, allowing rook check and rook to the seventh rank. So, yeah, you want to play d4 because your point is to queen your pawn. So you can keep pushing your pawn because your rook is behind it. So you want to push your pawn, and then when white plays rook c7, you queen. Then you don't care if he plays rook c7. So king c3 is inaccurate. Now it's a draw again. Takes, takes, rook c1, king d2. And this is just an easy draw. Like, there's no way black won, although black won in four moves. I mean, if rook f8, rook d6. Otherwise, I take, and it's a draw. But how did black win? What? Okay, so king e2. Maybe black didn't win, and I said he won. Rook takes, d2, rook check, king f2, f6, d3, f7, d2, rook e8, which loses. So in this position, white has one move that draws. It's very hard to find. 
So probably what White needed to do to make it easy, because after F7, White is very lucky to draw. To make it easy, you want to play Rook A6, D2, Rook A1. Okay, that's an easy way to draw. And then you'll sack your Rook for the pawn, he'll sack his Rook for your pawn, and it'll be a draw. Like Queen, takes, takes, F7, Rook here, King F5, King here, and, okay, and draw. Now this is still a draw, but but now you have to play correctly, which isn't going to happen. Okay, the way to draw for white now is rook here. Okay, so if black queens, now white's actually winning, which is funny. Unless you have black, then it's not funny. So you have to take the rook, and then I queen, and then you queen, and then king here check wins the rook, which is very funny. It's check, and I win your rook. So it's a draw. So that was the last chance to draw. Instead, you played here, or white did, queen, and now black is winning because if white queens, black has forced mate because the engine says so. But if you don't see forced mate because nobody can see 12 moves ahead, you just check and take the queen. That way you don't have to see mate. You just, you just win. Although actually this is the mate, so. So after D1 queen, for some reason, white resigned. Now, unless he lost on time, you shouldn't resign because after queen, the only move that wins is queen here. And black has like 25 legal moves. So, I mean, you know, wouldn't resign, but maybe he, he lost on time or maybe he resigned. Yeah, I, I feel bad about the life I've led because, because of the choices I've made in my life and I became a chess player and a chess streamer and I decided a few weeks ago, you know, Karen and I decided we do viewer game analysis and because of those life choices that I made, chess player, streamer, viewer game analysis, because of that, I had to look at that game. So the choices I made in my life were, were not the best ones.